I always start these talks by saying the future isn't what it used to be, and it's going to move much faster than you think. And in looking at this report, I think actually it's going to move faster than this report is going to go, to be honest. This is just what we can glimpse at at the moment and where it uh, goes forward. And we've got to be free to foot. It's very, very clear, just moving on from what Sergei was saying, that actually the other economies of this world are moving faster than we are, a lot faster. I chair the European Research Area Advisory Board, and we will be producing our first report to the Commissioner, and he will launch it, uh, Janusz Potovnik will launch it next Tuesday, and it's called Preparing Europe for a New Renaissance. We are falling behind, and we need to get moving. Otherwise, the digital economy will not be of much use to us here in Europe. We cannot go on in the way we are. And just look at what Australia and uh, China are doing about data management. Even my own country hasn't organized data management yet, let alone 27 member states. There are some serious issues to be looked at here. Now, in our report, we assume that the digital infrastructure is completely there. We're broadbanded as far as we can be, to the last point, to the last plug. Many institutions have it to win it in a couple of kilometers, but not right to the end. And we need to make sure everybody's uh, linked in with that. Just looking forward, though, um, and, and the other thing, too, is that other organizations in Europe are taking a real lead outside of where perhaps the economy is coming from. Just look at the European Grid Initiative being run out of CERN centered at Amsterdam at the moment. This is where national grid initiatives are starting to work together, starting to self-assemble. The whole area of regulations need to be positively taken forward in order to make sure that, that we really still uh, have a march, uh, our leaders in, this, in, the, in the world. But just going back to the economy, I mean, I'm an academic, and I look at what's going on, and I see some things that may well come. There's a few tasters. You'll see the, the, the topics in the report. But the, what about customization? <coughs> I think we're going to go back to a village manufacturing uh, uh, technology. You can, in Second Life, design your own clothes and have them made and delivered. Okay, you can take fashions and have them melded to you. You can have things designed for you online and go forward from that. The whole area of Second Life, I think we're just starting to explore. In fact, my own report here is we're looking at it. What will it look like in 30 uh, – we're looking at 2030, by the way. What will it look like to a pensioner in 2030? What will it look like to a young person in school? What will it look like to a, a, a physically disadvantaged person? And so on. Let's look at these sort of things. Then there are some big issues, security and identity identity is one of the key things. How do you know who you are? And how do you know somebody hasn't got hold of your identity? It's already happening, but I think there's a big role for looking at insurance, secure systems there. I think there is a, a big market for uh, almost a sort of private insurance that can actually secure and make, uh, make give you confidence in your security. Data protection is a massive issue. My last job, I had the, university, uh, the UK's data store, 50 million hits a day to trying to break in. Global data terrorism is not something to be ignored. <coughs> E-health is obvious. Soon you'll be able to do all your diagnosis online, or a lot of it online, but also at the same time there'll be monitoring of the drug deliveries for, your, for whatever you're taking so that it will balance out all the time so you have a level delivery of drugs. That's already starting. Data mining is another area. Uh, data and, uh, and text mining, the ability to sift, to look at what's going on, really going to have big impacts on market analysis and market developments. Trust. I think the biggest issue that we have facing us is trust. And I would uh, suggest that you look at a project that's going on between universities at the moment, but really important in Europe. It's called Clarin. It's a semantic web-based language system that's trying to see what words mean in context. Not what you think they mean, but what they really mean to that to person. So you can build up a real trust between two people. Publishing is going to be transformed. We haven't seen anything yet. Linking of e-publications to data, to be able to manipulate the data, to see what a word on an e-book really means, because you don't know what the word really means. You can click and out will come the explanation of the contextual meaning of that word. Big boy business opportunities there. Then we have obviously media. Media is almost there. Media are on demand. And how are you going to make that, uh, take that forward? Then clearly within the publishing realm, there's the whole issue of open access. 
Knowledge is free. How you use the knowledge is important. And this is really important in the global economy that we actually look at open access and open innovation and take it forward. For many of us, the IPR, the intellectual property um, regulations uh, in Europe, the patent system and uh, all that that involves is archaic. And we need to change that as well. And I would commend that to you. And finally, from my own perspective, there's a so-called virtual research environment. How are researchers, how are teachers going to operate in this environment? Big opportunities. We ain't seen nothing yet.